looks as though we've got a clean one this time. The Revernation have mostly made the best start last time. This time it's Rodney McCurdy. Gary Cohen coming around the outside as they go down into the right-hander. Rodney McCurdy leads. Gary Cohen, number 30, goes up the inside. So number 30, Gary Cohen leads his fellow Antrimant. Number 40, Rodney McCurdy, Gary Cohen in the 250 machine. I think that's 69, Jamie with him in third position. Just check here with Mick Grant, who's joined me in the comedy box. Mick, is that your man going up the inside? Yes, he's in third place there, Alan. Um, I think the problem that started the race there was the guy from the second line did jump. Um, but they're supposed to wait at least 10 seconds, and of course 10 seconds when you're adrenaline running is quite a long time. It sure is, and Rodney McCurdy there, a little kick coming out of the again, but Gary Cowan and the 250 Yamaha is the 250 machine going to be the bike to have in these damp conditions, although Carr eventually tells down to the half and they come on the opening lap. Cowan leads, but with him. Looks very menacing. Up the inside of Rodney McCurdy, and with him certainly looking good here at the moment. There's the first of the Hondas, that's Fogarty, followed by 24, Alan Irwin, and then number 29 there, David Leach it is, in sixth position. Across the line then, they open the first lap, is 30, Gary Cowan, 69, Jimmy Whittam, 40. That's Rodney McCurdy. Behind Rodney McCurdy, it's number four, Carl Fogarty, and behind Carl Fogarty, just checking there, it's Alan Irwin still behind Carl Fogarty, in sixth position. So the leader comes through, Cowan leads, Jamie with him. Well, Nick, what do you think is the best machine here in these conditions? Well, at the minute, I can't believe it. The 250 is leading it, and um, even down the side, it didn't look a lot different. Maybe they put the wrong engine. Oops, it's and down. Gary drops it. Oh, it's sad, is that, because That's that would have been a good race. He's, giving them, he's getting up, he's getting up. He's giving them a little bit of a knock, but unfortunately, Gary drops it there. So Gary Cowan drops the east-west. Just looking here for Jamie with him there, leading. And here it is again. And Mick, just watch this. There it is, over the top. Oh, that looked painful, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, just, it just lost the rear end of it. And um, it really is sad, is that? Because they're riding the wheels off the machine. Because even though it's a 250, an awful lot less horsepower. And to make it look to go down the straight as quick as the 750s, it must have been coming up the corners awful fast. And with the change at the front, it's the new world champion in Formula One, Carl Fogarty, the man who won the Grand Prix, is into the lead. Number 69, Jamie Whittam is second. Number 40, Rodney McCurdy is still third. Alan Irwin is fourth, number 24. So a great action shot there of Carl Fogarty, number four, on the Honda. Cranks it into the right-hander at Colonial. His first appearance here at Kirkerson. 69, Jamie Whittam behind him in second position. Fogarty, who's obviously a man full of confidence at the moment with his win in this Formula One World Championship. Looking good. Fogarty just seems to come on better and better all year. I watched him in the Isle of Man this year and he looked very, very ragged, but um, I think just like Whitham has collected himself and he's starting to put things together and it's um, giving good results. And just checking there in the background, Mick, I can see Alan Irwin, number 24, the man who was second in that epic battle here last year, is slowly but surely moving up through towards the leaders on the McManus Honda. So at the Herpen here on lap three, I hate to say it, Alan, but I think uh, Irwin could be the danger man here. And yep. uh, the, the two guys in front just can't afford to rest, rest even a second. It looks like it. he's certainly closing all the way down and on the 500 Honda two-stroke machine. Would that be any more tractable in these conditions, Mick? Well, I think quite honestly, coming out of the corners with it being so slippy, the four-stroke will possibly have the advantage. Um, but obviously the 500, once it gets going down the straight, could have a bit more speed and they do tend to stop a wee bit quicker than the four strokes. So, I think overall, fairly well balanced out. Well, certainly there they are at the moment. You can see Erwin really coming into the frame. The man in the yellow helmet there, so number four, Carl Fogarty from Blackburn, the 22-year-old TT Formula One world champion, the number 69, Jamie Whitton, the man who Mick Grant unkindly says he sends out with number 69 on, so there'll be upends that you can still beat the number the same way up. But Jimmy now become a very, very steady Rider indeed, looking as they come down into the hopper to complete five laps coming through to complete four laps, sorry, they're coming through in their fifth. Fogarty leads. Second position then, Jimmy Wood in third is Alan Irwin. Just looking back there, I think you can see Stephen Cullen, the Francis Neal Motors machine coming up through, but the first three across the line. Still number 40, Rodney McCurdy in fourth position. In fifth position then. Checking with my lap scores here to see if we can put the fifth place man. We can't hit, but you can tell you that number five, Trevor Nation, is in sixth spot. There's the marshals out at the side of the track, doing their usual efficient job. Fogarty, who now who's easing away from Jimmy Whitham, 
and certainly Carl Fogarty seems to be stepping up the pace a little bit because Jimmy Whittam is falling back onto the claws of Alan Irwin, but Irwin certainly is no longer making ground in Fogarty. He's looking good at the moment, really pressing hard into the chicane. And that's Stephen Cole, it looks like, or is it Steve Hislop, 29? It may be 29 there, or 23, it's quite possible it was Rob Orm and another 250 machine that's coming up through there. But we'll try and pick them up at the Herpen, the race leader we can get. That's number four, Carl Fogarty. Second is 24, Erwin. Third is 69, Whitham. Then is 40, Rodney McCurdy. Then is 29, Dave Leach. So number 29, Dave Leach it is in fifth position. The first five then go through. Alan Erwin has moved through to second. Alan, I was watching uh, Alan Irwin in practice, in the time practice, and he looked frighteningly quick through the corner onto the start and finish straight, and every other lap he got the thing sideways, and uh, he's obviously feeling very, very confident, and he's certainly got an awful lot of bike control. He has. He's just actually back from injury a couple of weeks ago because he unfortunately slid off at the Ulster Grand Prix and broke a few bones, but he's obviously fully recovered and getting back into the swing of things here on the McManus Honda. So Fogarty... Coming down into the chicane. Alan Irwin there closing in on him. And it looks as though, and we've another follow there. And it can't be 13, I think it's 22. 22 or 23 has slid off up there. Nigel Bos Nigel Bosworth, in fact, you just see Nigel walking down there behind the barrier. So Nigel off the Aprilla, but obviously okay. There's the leaders through the herbert. I think, Alan, I think Irwin's actually catching up on Fogarty. Yeah, he is now, there's no doubt. And the interesting thing from your point of view, Mick, he's bringing Jamie with him back with him. For the moment, they seem to lose touch, but now they're closing in again on Carl Fogarty. That's right. Um, although we came here earlier in the year, um, there's nothing like riding on your own circuit, and obviously Alan knows every little bit about it. He knows all the slippery parts. I don't think Jim would feel a wee bit happier sat behind him at this stage. Well, that's true, Mick, but I would make one comment for some reason. There hasn't been as much racing at Kirkuson this year as there has been in previous years, and I think this is actually only the fourth time the boys have been here. So there's not so much advantage. So having said that, they do, of course, practice here during the week, and that makes a big difference. But there it is, Carl Fogarty. And really, his performances in Ulster this year really have been a revelation from a virtually unknown. We all remember his father, George, over here. Carl has certainly become a talking point. I think for the people that thought maybe that Carl won the, the F1 World Championship this year by a bit of a fault, um, I think you can see now he's actually sort of hammering the uh, pack that he did win it fairly and squarely. So there they are coming through now to complete seven laps and David Leeds has moved up into fourth. He went through there on the inside of Rodney McCurdy. But across the line then to complete seven laps, Carl Fogarty, number four in the lead. In second position, number 24, Alan Irwin. In third position, number 69, Jamie Whittam. And up to fourth position, number 29, David Leach. And in fifth position still, number 40, Rodney McCurdy from Antrim. Fogarty then going through, and there's Jamie Whittam back through on the inside of Alan Irwin at Fisherman's. Jamie Whittam through on the inside, back up into second position. Irwin drops down to third. Down the straight again. Carl Fogarty tucks himself down into these Hondas. It's quite interesting, Alan, that um, the uh, two Forster rides on Michelin tyres, and they'll both be on full wax and Irwin's on the Dunlop, and um, it'll be quite interesting, interesting to see which comes out tops here. And there's Irwin back ahead at the Herpen, so that must have been the break, so perhaps the exit from the chicane. But the real battle now on for second position. Carl Fogarty, of course, has a chance to pull away while the two men behind battle it out with each other. If Carl keeps it fairly cool and steady, he can edge away as the other two boys watch each other. And certainly he's looking fairly smooth at the moment. Just nicely through the right-hander there at Colonial, eases it into the left-hander and then winds it on as he goes across the short strip to this long right-hander at Fisherman's where Erwin and Whitham changed last time. Let's see if we can pick them up this time. I think they've actually dropped back a bit and they're doing themselves no favour. Erwin's gone, Erwin's, Erwin's gone, out. Erwin's gone. They were actually holding themselves up there, I think, much by Dyson. So Jamie Whitham is on his own in second position there. Race leader Carl Fogarty now out on his ninth lap of the circuit, heading down towards the Herpen. Twelve laps to remember the first distance here in this Ankle on Club Neil Robinson Memorial Trophy Race, sponsored by the Ankle on Club. That's a club of motorcycle enthusiasts here. Put 
thousands of pounds into Irish motorcycle racing over this past five to six years. But the leader, Carl Fogarty, coming up through. And I think Irwin may still be there in third. I just thought I might have got a glance at the yellow helmet way in the background, so it may have been an overshoot rather than a fall off, but we'll have to win and get that confirmed. And in fact, just get in confirmed it. And I can see looking out the window here away from the monitor, Alan Irwin is still there in third position. So he must have overshot at Colonia last time around. Carl Fogarty, meantime, still the race leader. So Carl Fogarty in the lead. Number 69, Jamie Whitton, remember, in second position. Number 24, Alan Irwin is third. And 29, David Leach in fourth position. That's the order at the end of lap nine here in this first leg of the Neil Robinson Memorial Trophy race. There's Alan Irwin, number 24, in third position. After that mistake a couple of laps ago, going down into Colonial. So Irwin, he was second here last year. And here's the race leader, number four, Carl Fogarty at the Herpen. Looking now for number 69, Jamie Whitham there in second position on the Suzuki. So Honda versus Suzuki at the moment, but Carl Fogarty looking very good. Has led right from the start of this race. Coming through now, heading out onto the penultimate lap. Right onto the 11th lap here, number four, Carl Fogarty, who actually was advised by his doctor not to race at the start of this season because he had sustained a leg injury last year. He says that perhaps because he was a little bit scared of damage in the leg had fallen off, that slowed him down a little bit, and he thinks that that may have accounted for his excellent performance. The old story, big very often that a rider turns in his best performance when he's not trying. That's right. Um, Phil, Phil Miller this year had a terrible start to the season. He was just trying too hard and getting nowhere. Um, he finally settled down, sat relaxing, he's getting good results now, and um, I think it's all about enjoying it, really. So we're just looking now for the leaders coming down into the Herpen. Number four, Carl Fogarty, will be coming up to complete 11 laps, heading out onto the... Number four, Carl Fogarty, then the race leader, pours the Honda out of the Herpen, will be getting the signal as he crosses the line that it's one lap to go. The last lap flag will be going out to him. For Carl Fogarty, crosses the line, 69, Jimmy Woodham coming down through in second position, looking for the third place rider, the yellow helmet there of number 24, Alan Irwin, and Alan Irwin has been caught in the closing stages by number 29, David Leach in fourth position, fifth position then, remember, it's number 40, Rodney McCurdy, but certainly the damp conditions here today, the rider's getting fairly well spread out, and that's one of the unfortunate things of wet conditions, you don't usually get as close a racing as you do in the dry, but at the chicane on the last lap, number four, Carl Fogarty coming through, heading down towards the hairpin. The full wet tyres, Alan, on a day like this where there's quite a bit of grip about, will just about manage 12 laps. I think if you're looking at maybe 16 or 18 laps, um, you could see a few different um, changes towards the end, you know, for people that maybe have risked intermediates. Oh, and a little, a little bit of a snake there as it comes up. We're looking for number four, Carl Fogarty, coming up to see if the checkered flag goes out. The checkered flag goes out. Jimmy Whitham, number 69, comes through in second position. 24, Alan Irwin is third. So the first three are Carl Fogarty. Jimmy Whitham is second. Alan Irwin is third. We'll give you the rest after the break. And on the siding. The riders then making their way around the circuit on this warm-up lap. Everyone just easing through, remember, as Jackie has explained, at the end of the opening leg, it was Carl Fogarty who won the first leg, incidentally, at a speed of 70.398 miles per hour. He starts the second leg, then, with a total of 20 points. Second will be 69, Jimmy Whitton on 17. Third is Irwin on 15. Fourth is Dave Leach on 13. Fifth is Rodney McCurdy on 10. And sixth, then, is Darren Nixon on 9. So that's the points position there as we... Wait for them to make their way round at the end of this warm-up lap. There's Robert Dunlop going through in the background that Roger Marshall there was talking about. Robert, who I spoke to him earlier, he said he certainly had tremendous time down there in Australia and New Zealand. And from just coming out of very hot weather, they're just there at the end of their spring, I understand. He was finding the blustery and damp conditions here at Kirkston today just a little bit hard to endure. But number 29 there coming up towards us, David Leach. David Leach, who came up through into fourth position at the end of the opening leg coming up there alongside number 26 Stephen Cullen another of these Francis Neil Motors machines with the electric orange coloured frame Jim Whitham there joining the front row and somebody really coming up there and anchoring it up hard but there you see the back of these riders as they go up there Michael Swan there on the Ray Racing machine heading up 
just taking up their positions. The red flag up there at the front. But Mick Grant has joined me with you once again. And earlier there we had Roger speculating on tyres. Mick, do you know what tyres are on as far as Suzuki's certainly are concerned? I should have been up there, Alan, actually, but I've missed it down the box. I would think they will have stayed on the full wet tyres. Um, although the, the condition of the circuit looks like intermediates, apparently it's so very slippery that um, they need the full wets to get the grip. So it looks as though we're just planning for the off, off they go again. Everyone away. Down through the first left-hander. And that looks as if David Leach who's actually gone out in front. I think both legs went to no, then, In fact, it's Darren Dixon. It's Darren Dixon, the British Formula One champion. Well, that seemed to be the case, but so far there's been no sign, I think, of the red flag. So it looks as though we may have got a runner. 19, Darren Dixon then has gone through into the lead. Carl Fogarty there in second position. Jimmy Whittam in third as they come to the chicane in this opening lap. So Dixon in the lead. Fogarty is second. Whittam is third and Robert Dunlop is in fourth. Rodney McCurdy is in fifth. And I do believe it's Philip McCallum in sixth in the 250 Honda. So down to the help and they come for the first of the 12 laps. Darren Dixon then swings in. Carl Fogarty is second. Whittam is third. Dunlop is fourth. That's Robert Dunlop, no sign of joy, but up and across the line for the first time. In the lead, number 19, Darren Dixon. Second, number four, Carl Fogarty. Third position then, 69, Jimmy Whitham. Fourth is Robert Dunlop. Fifth is 40, Rodney McCurdy. And behind Rodney McCurdy there, I think, I didn't quite get the number, but it looked like number five, Trevor Nation. I was talking to um, Dixon in the, in the interval there, and um, he was just saying that he's reveling in this wet, slippy sort of condition. So he's obviously going to be a hard man to beat, Alan. Yes, Darren Dixon is, of course, Mr. Television. I think he's only failed in one televised race this year to make it first past the checkered flag. He really can turn it on when the TV cameras are about, certainly in England. It looks as though he's going to do it here in the second leg of the Neil Robinson. Through the chicane for the second time. Carl Fogarty still second. Fogarty, of course, if he stayed there, that would still give him overall victory because Dixon was down in sixth position in the opening leg. So Dixon down to the Herpen for the second time. Number 19 on the Paget Suzuki. Followed through by Carl Fogarty, then number 69, a little bit of a kick there, Mick, from your man, Jimmy Whittam. That's right, I don't think the tyres will be just that warm at the minute, Alan, and um, maybe it's going to take a couple laps before they get full grip into them. And certainly just looking there, Robert Dunlop is really getting Patsy O'Kane's Honda well wound up here in fourth position, so Robert perhaps acclimatising himself back to the cold weather and damp conditions here of Northern Ireland, certainly going well on the Patsy O'Kane Hollis Honda there in fourth. There is Whittam coming through in third, looking out for the green flash of Robert Dunlop in fourth position. And there is Dunlop just coming into the back of the frame now. Darren Dixon still leads then. Goes through, Fogarty in second. And there is a good indication of the murky conditions we have here at Curtis for the day. None of last year's sunshine. Darren Dixon has a quick check over the shoulder there. Heading through now on his third lap. Coming through to complete three laps here in this second leg of the Ankle and Club sponsored Dean Robinson Memorial Trophy Race. The Ankle and Club, as I said earlier, a band of two motorcycling enthusiasts who it's really a social club and they put thousands of pounds and tens of thousands of pounds over that into motorcycling in Ireland over this past five, six years. Dixon leads, Fogarty is second, Whittam is third, Dunlop is fourth, McCurdy is fifth. In fifth position in Trevor Nation, it looks like number five in sixth spot. And certainly the man who's been going really well here right today is number 40, Rodney McCurdy from Brock Sheen. He really has been the surprise package and has been riding very, very well on this Suzuki. Dixon lead then. Looking comfortable at this stage, Mick. Yes, he doesn't seem to have any bothers. He's, I wouldn't, he's not really pulling away, but then again, uh, I think Whittam's got through in the second place. Yes, indeed. So they're getting a little bit spread out. Jimmy Whittam then through ahead of Carl Fogarty. But remember, there's a three points differential between them, so he has to get really up another position. And there's his look coming through. You just saw, in fact, it was 29, David Leach. It was who sneaked through on the inside there of Trevor Nation. And Steve Hislop wasn't that far behind them. So number 29, David Leach, who was on a charge in the first place. Looks as though he's going to do the same again here in the second. Out of the half and they go. 
Darren Dixon, the race leader, on the Suzuki. 69, Jamie Whittle, second position, also on the Suzuki. Number four, Card Fogarty, in third position. Then in fourth position, it's 15, Robert Dunlop. I think if Whittam's looking at winning this one, he's actually got to get Dixon between himself and Fogarty. And um, obviously, you know, that's going to go a fair bit quicker than going at the minute. I think that Suzuki that Darren Dixon riding, is that the two-stroke machine, the derivative of the old Suzuki Grand Prix machine? That's right, that's a 500. Um, the two behind him are four-stroke uh, 750s. But I think round here today, there wouldn't be a lot in it, really. So there we have Robert Dunlop and Patrick O'Kane's Honda coming through. In fourth position, fifth position still number 40, Rodney McCurdy. In actual fact, Alan, um, Whitham is, is closing on Dixon. Yes. He's certainly pulling it in now as they come down towards the Herfman. Jamie Whittam, last year he had an incident in the Sun for a trophy race that we'll never forget in the last lap when he picked up Stephen Cullen for a ride. But no problems today for Jamie, and he really is hauling in Darren Dixon at this stage. Coming through now, from out onto the sink lap, five laps completed. Twelve laps, remember the distance here in this second leg for the ankle and trophy. Darren Dixon, number 19 lead. Number 69, Jimmy Whittam, and Whittam goes up the inside. Can he get it all anchored up? Up alongside he goes and he's through. Good stuff there from Jimmy. I can't believe that. I thought he forgot the brakes altogether. Well, he certainly didn't have any problems whatsoever. Perhaps they're being a little bit cautious and Jimmy just decided there to try and see how far he could actually go, but he looked comfortable all the way doing it. There wasn't even a twitch with the machine. Carl Fogarty then sitting back in third position. And remember, that would mean if they stay in these positions, if my mathematics are correct at the moment, that Whittam would now hold the advantage. He is three points behind where he is now. He now has a five-point advantage over Carl Fogarty. So Whittam would take the overall. I'm just wondering, Alan, if uh, Whittam's actually put an intermediate on the rear tyre because for the first three laps it didn't seem to be anything spectacular. But now he's getting his sort of um, act together. He's suddenly going. And that would certainly indicate that maybe he's got an intermediate on. It's just got warm. It's just starting to work. Yeah, he certainly seems to be able to put the car down very well that time on the way out of the herp, and There was no twitching from it. He really was getting it well warmed up. So Jamie Whittam then on the Suzuki. Cranks it into the right-hander. Now out in the seventh lap here. At the oh, dear. And that's a nice, graceful little slide off. Picks itself up, but away he goes running after it. So back into the lead goes Darren Dixon and you know what they say about commentators you should never say they're going smooth because the next thing they're away but there we have it Dixon's back in the lead Fogarty is back in second and we'll just have a look at this again this incident to Jamie take it up Mick yeah it's going in quite deep I'm not quite sure what goes first yeah it's the front, front wheel that's gone which is quite surprising but I know for sure he's got a full wet on the front and um, maybe that's an undoing We'll have to get the tea cut out before the next race. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, back with the race leader. Number 19, Darren Dixon, swings it through the heaven. And amongst all that, number four, Carl Fogarty, has actually closed a little bit on Darren Dixon. Darren obviously having to ease the throttle a little bit there as Jimmy Whitham slid it gracefully out in front of him. And Whitham, we should imagine, we'll have to check with our lap scores. May well be back up and mean mounted. He certainly, if the machine started, Jimmy was perfectly OK. The race leader, Darren Dixon, then, into this right hundred Colonial one. Everybody tight little right-hander at times as you go in then the quick flick out through the left-hander on the Paget Suzuki, Paget's a name synonymous with motorcycle racing you know, over the year, Carl Fogarty then in second position, number four 22 years of age, his father George, a regular visitor here to both the Ulster Grand Prix and Northwest through the hundreds prior to his retirement Alan, uh, I've just seen that James Whittam is up into 12th place and going quite quick well, that's good to know that Jamie's going again. He has been improving all year, and um, normally when he crashes, he makes quite a mess of it, so that's definitely an improvement for him. <laughs> well, here it is. This man, Darren Dixon, Mr. Television, I think we could nickname him again. Seeming as though he's going to do the business. We'll be coming through now to complete eight laps here in this second leg of the Neil Robinson Trophy, but the man who leads the Neil Robinson Trophy overall at the moment is Carl Fogarty, and they haven't been able to do any calculations while they're down to that, but... I wouldn't suspect that Darren Dixon there, who was sick first time out, could well be coming up onto the certainly high positions for the overall result. Very neat there through the right and the left hander, going across into this long right hander of fishermen that has caused some problems. And that is usually because fishermen's is a very windy corner. If the riders can get it cranked over, and all of a sudden they've cranked it into the wind, you can see it blowing there. 
the grass blowing quite strongly, and if the wind suddenly dies, the riders suddenly find the whole setup has changed and down they go. But Darren Dixon, no problem. Carl Fogarty, he checks behind him to see Fogarty there in second position. And just checking down the leaderboard at the end of nine laps, Carl, or nine laps are coming up, but in the lead it's number 19, Darren Dixon. Second is number four. That is Carl Fogarty. Third is number 40, Rodney McCurdy. Fourth is number 29, Dave Beach. Fifth is number 15, Robert Dunlop. And completing the top six, making another pure man, number 10, Bez Miller. Yeah, Mess seems to be coming to the picture again. In the first leg, he got in the second, um, the second bunch, and he never really got through. But um, this time, it seems to be going a lot, lot better. And in fact, we just saw Mess Miller, David Leach, and number 40, Rodney McCurdy, going through to help him, and David Leach had actually moved up a position. But now back with the race leader, number 19, Darren Dixon, in the lead. In second position, it's still number four, Carl Fogarty. Checking as they come through. I think Fogart is quite sensible in uh, sort of staying in second place. Maybe he couldn't get to the front anyway, but he doesn't need to do any more than he's doing to win this leg on aggregate. And in fact, just checking now that Darren Dixon coming down into the Herpin. Number 29 there, David Leach in third position. That actually makes us they get ready to head out onto this penultimate lap that the pageant machines are running in first and third position. We're checking to see who's in third here as they come down towards us. And that looks to be number 29, is it? David Leach, yes, number 29, David Leach is in third. Number 40, Rodney McCurdy is in fourth. Number 10, Phil Meller is in fifth. And in sixth position, it's number 15, Robert Dunlop. So the pageant machines running in first and third position at the moment. Certainly a good result for them here at the moment. 11 laps to now out on the penultimate lap. One lap to go at the end of this one. And Darren Dixon, apart from being briefly headed there by Jimmy Whitten before Jimmy slid out of it, but now on his way back up through the thing goes through. Carl Fogley there with him in second position. Fogley he must know by now he's, he's got it in the back. He's got a mile lead over the third guy. Just as long as he does nothing silly, the, uh, the race is his. Yes, I think Carl has decided for at the moment he's obviously getting signal from his pits, knowing that he can take the overall result as they come up here to start the last lap. And that really, if Carl Fogarty can take this Enkelon Trophy race, the Neil Robinson Enkelon sponsored race for the Neil Robinson Memorial Trophy, there's the yellow flag with the black cross on it, or board I think it is we're using today. It's not flowing about in the breeze, so it must have been a board to signify the right onto the last lap. But Carl Fogarty certainly will have it. a tremendous season in Ulster this year. Winner of the Formula One race at the Ulster Grand Prix. Round the second over 120 miles per hour. And here looking as though he's going to take the Neil Robinson Trophy. The second year it's been run. Dixon, number 19, out in front. Second position is number four, Carl Fogarty. Third down is 29, David Leach. Fourth is number 40, Rodney McCurdy. And what a day he's having. Fifth is number 10, Miller. Sixth is number 15, Robert Dunlop. And in seventh position, it is number 17, Steve Frey. Steve Spray there then in seventh position. 19, Darren Dixon, the race leader, looks over his shoulder, exiting the chicane, heads down to the Harpen for the last lap, and this is the second leg of the Neil Robinson Memorial Trophy. So coming up now to get the checkered flag, Darren Dixon just eases it through the right-hander, the checkered flag will be displayed. Coming out, there it goes for number 19, Darren Dixon wins. In second position, number four, Carl Fogarty. And looking now for the third place finisher, and that will be number 29, David Leach. Hopefully, if the order is the same as it was last time, no sign of Dave Leach as yet. And just looking there, and he goes across the line. That's the part of the scene. 29, David Leach is in third. So, a quick recap then. A win of the, for the second leg of the Neil Robbins for 19, Darren Dixon. Second, number four, Carl Fogarty. Third, number 29, and that was Dave Leach and more action after the break.